Chapter 2 of Stories of Beowulf Told to the Children. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Stories of Beowulf Told to the Children by H. E. Marshall. Chapter 2 How Beowulf the Goth Came to Daneland. And now it came to pass that across the sea in far Gothland the songs of Grendel and his wrath were sung, until to Beowulf the Goth the tale of woe was carried. And Beowulf, when he heard of Grendel's deeds, cried out that he would go across the waves to Hrothgar, the brave king, since he had need of men to help him. Now Beowulf was very strong in war, mighty among men. Of all the nobles of the Goth there was none so great as he. Much beloved, too, was he of Hygelac, king of the Goths, for they were kinsmen and good comrades. And because of the love they bore him, many prayed him to bide peacefully at home, but others, knowing his prowess, bade him go forth. Beowulf was eager for the contest, so taking with him fifteen warriors and good comrades, he stepped into a ship and bade the captain set sail for Daneland. Then, like a bird, wind-driven upon the waves, the foam-necked ship sped forth. For two days the warriors fared on over the blue sea, until they came again to Daneland, and anchored beneath the steep mountains of that far shore. There, lightly springing to the shore, the warriors gave thanks to the sea-god that the voyage had been so short and easy for them. But upon the heights above them stood the warden of the shore. His duty it was to guard the sea-cliffs, and mark well that no foe landed unaware. Now as the warriors sprang to shore, he saw the sun gleam upon sword and shield and coat of mail. What manner of men be these? he asked himself. And mounting upon his horse, he rode towards them. Waving his huge spear aloft, he cried as he rode onwards, what men be ye who come thus clad in mail-coats, thus armed with sword and spear? Whence cometh this proud vessel over the waves? Long have I kept watch and ward upon this shore, that no foe might come unaware to Daneland. Yet never have I seen shield-bearing men come openly as ye, and never have I seen more noble warrior than he who seems your leader. Nay, such splendour of armour, such beauty and grace have I not seen. But, strangers, travellers from the sea, I must know whence ye come ere ye go further. Ye may not pass else, lest ye be spies and enemies to Daneland. It were well that ye told me speedily. Then Beowulf answered him, We are folk of the Goths, thanes of King Hygelac. In friendly guise we come to seek thy lord, King Hrothgar, the mighty chieftain. We have a goodly message to the famed lord of the Danes. There is no cause to be secret. Thou knowest if it be true or no, but we indeed have heard that among ye Danes there is a great and wily foe, a loather of valour, who prowleth terribly in dark nights, making great slaughter and causing much woe. Therefore have I come, for perchance I may be of succour to the noble King Hrothgar in his need. Fearless and bold, Facing the band of warlike men, the warden sat upon his horse, and when Beowulf had ceased speaking, he answered him. Ye come as friends, O bearers of weapons, O wearers of war garments. Follow me then, and I will lead you on. I will also give commandment to my men that they guard your ship where it lies by the shore, until ye come again. So following the warden, they marched forward. Eager they were for battle, eager to see the far-famed Hart Hall. And as they marched, their gold-decked helmets, their steel mail-coats, their jewelled sword-hilts flashed in the sunlight, and the clank and clash of weapons and armour filled the air. On and on they pressed quickly, until the warden drew rein. There, he said, pointing onwards, there lies the great Hart Hall. No longer have ye need of me. The way ye cannot miss. As for me, I will back to the sea to keep watch against a coming foe. Then, wheeling his horse, he galloped swiftly away, while the Goths marched onwards until they reached the Hart Hall. There, 
Weary of the long way that they had come, they laid down their shields, and leaning their spears against the wall, sat upon the bench before the great door. And as they sat there resting, there came to them a proud warrior. Whence come ye with these great shields? he asked. Whence with these grey shirts of mail, these jewelled helmets and mighty spears? I am Hrothgar's messenger and servant, I who ask. Never saw I prouder strangers, never more seemly men. I ween it is not from some foe ye flee, in fear and trouble, rather in pride and daring it would seem ye come to visit Hrothgar. Then answered Beowulf, My name is Beowulf, and we are Hygelac's thranes. To thy lord the mighty Hrothgar we will tell our errand, if he will deign that we do greet him. The warrior bowed low, for well he saw that Beowulf was a mighty prince. I will ask my lord the king, he said, if so be thou mayst come to him, and to thee right quickly will I bear his answer. So saying he departed, and came to Hrothgar, where he sat among his earls. The king was now old and grey-haired, and sat amid his wide men bowed with grief, for there was none among them mighty enough to free his land from the ogre. My lord, the warrior said, and knelt before the king, from far beyond the sea strange knights are come. They pray that they may speak with thee. These sons of battle name their leader Beowulf. Refuse them not, O king, but give them kindly answer, for by the splendour of their arms I deem them worthy of much honour. The prince who sendeth such warriors hither must be great indeed. Beowulf, cried Hrothgar, I knew him when he was yet a lad. His father and his mother have I known. Truly he has sought a friend, and I have heard of him that he is much renowned in war, and that he hath the strength of thirty men in the grip of his hand. I pray heaven he has been sent to free us from the horror of Grendel. Haste thee, bid him enter, bid them all to come. I would see the whole friendly band together. Say to them that they are right welcome to the land of the Danes. The warrior bowed low. Then once more going to the door of the hall, he stood before Beowulf and his knights. My lord, he said, the king biddeth me to say to thee that he knoweth already of thy rank and fame. He said to you, brave-hearted men from over the sea, that ye are all welcome to him. Now may ye go in to speak with him, wearing your war trappings and with your helmets upon your head. But leave your shields, your spears, and deadly swords without here, until the talk be done. Then Beowulf and his warriors arose. Some went with him to the hall, others stayed without to guard the shields and weapons. Guided by the Danish warriors, the knights marched right through the great heart hall until they stood before the gift seat where the aged king sat. Hail to thee, Hrothgar, cried Beowulf. I am Hygelac's friend and kinsman. Many fair deeds have I done, though yet I be young. And to me in far Gothland the tale of Grendel's grim warfare were told. Seafaring men told that the great hall so fair and well built doth stand forsaken and empty as soon as the shades of evening fall, because of the prowlings of that fell giant. Then, as we heard such tales, did my friends urge me to come to thee, because they knew my might. They had themselves seen how I laid low my foes. Five monsters I bound, thus humbling a giant brood. Sea monsters I slew in the waves at night-time. Many a wrong have I avenged, fiercely grinding the oppressors. And now will I fight against Grendel. Alone against the ogre will I wage war. Therefore one boon I crave of thee, noble prince. Refuse it not, for thereto am I come from very far. I pray thee that I alone, having with me only mine own, earls and comrades, may cleanse Hart Hall. It has been told to me that Grendel recketh not of weapons, for his hide is as of steel armour. Therefore will I bear neither sword nor shield, but I will grapple with a fiend with mine hands alone, and foe to foe we will fight to victory. And unto whomsoever it seemeth good to the Lord of life, unto him shall victory be given. If Grendel win, then will he fearlessly devour the people of the Goths, my dear comrades, my noble earls, 
even as aforetime he has devoured thy warriors. Then wilt thou not need to cover me with a mound, for the lone moor will be my burial place. Where ye track the footsteps of the ogre stained with gore, there will he with greed devour my thames and me. But if I die, then send back to Hygelac my coat of mail, for in all the world there is no other like to it. This is all I ask. Beowulf was silent, and Hrothgar the aged king answered him. O oh, friend, Beowulf, he said, Thou hast sought us out to help us, yet to me it is pain and sorrow to tell to any man what shame, what sudden mischiefs Grendel in his wrath have done to me. See, my palace troop, my war band hath grown small. Grendel has done this. In his prowlings he hath carried off my men, so that my warriors are few. Full oft, when the wine was red in the cup, my knights did swear that they would await the coming of Grendel, to meet him with sword thrust. So when night fell, they abode in the hall. But in the morning, when day dawned, my fair house was red with blood, and I needs must mourn the death of yet more gallant knights, must have fewer thanes to own my rule. But sit now to the feast, and eat with gladness, Sure that victory will come to thee. So the Goths sat them down in the great heart hall, And feasted with the Dane folk. The mead cup was carried round, The minstrel sang of deeds of love and battle, And there was great joy and laughter in all the hall. End of chapter 2